what, what the haters talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? Before we get started, let's do a little house cleaning. If you haven't done so already, after you subscribe, there's a little bell next to the subscribe button. Go ahead and click that bell so that you can get your alerts each time I drop a video like this. That way, you'll be one of the first in the know and to be able to comment, like, whatever you want to do. Make sure you share also. Now, let's get into it. So on Saturday, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry had a glorious wedding. People from all over the world descended on London to show their support, to be there for them. Hundreds of millions of people from all over the world watched it. They were captivated. Women in particular were very excited about the wedding, especially, especially black women. Many of these black women who were excited about this black woman marrying Prince Harry, becoming a princess, were the same women who were just days ago criticizing Childish Gambino for being married to a white woman. Nevertheless, they were very excited about the princess Meghan Markle marrying a white man. Now, I posted a comment on Instagram reminding people about the British Empire's role in slavery and oppression around the world. I wasn't even attacking the union of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. I was basically reminding people of the British Empire's role in enslaving and oppressing black people around the world in the past and present. It's important that I say present because a lot of people were saying, well, that happened a long time ago. And they forget that the British Empire, that Britain still has a hand in oppressing black people, even in Africa. Somehow, many people were more passionate about defending the British Empire's lie than history's truth, especially black people. So y'all happy? That's the question. The British royals may have welcomed a black member into their family, but that doesn't mean they're off the hook for hundreds of years of colonizing and enslaving Africans and dark-skinned people around the globe, all while amassing a ton of wealth in the process. Now, before you comment, you may want to watch the whole video because it's not likely to end the way you think it's going to end. Sorry to be the one to rock the boat, rain on your parade, or throw ice-cold water in the face of the prince and the princess, but somebody got to do it for one. Despite the media craze surrounding Meghan Markle, a biracial black actor, she would not be the first royal of African descent. That was Philippa of Hainault, the queen consort of Edward III, and Queen Charlotte, who was descended from the black branch of the Portuguese royal family and whose namesakes are the cities of Charlotte, North Carolina, and Charlottesville, Virginia. Harry's grandmother, Queen Elizabeth II, is the great, 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 great granddaughter of Queen Charlotte, the first black queen of England. One should not overlook the optics and symbolisms of having a black woman as a member of a family that represents a most conspicuous and potent symbol of white European wealth and power. Surely the white supremacists that Donald Trump retweets the Britain first crowd, those who embraced Brexit and assassinated a member of parliament, are reacting to the news with horror and rage. There's something to be said for breaking down traditional white spaces, whether the White House or Buckingham Palace. But the conversations cannot stop there. 
lest we praise the symbolism and lose sight of the substance, which is what everybody is doing in my opinion. The British royal family presided over the exploitation of untold millions of people in Africa, India, and around the world. So let's get back to the excitement. Let me say this. I'm not one of those dudes who see a black woman with a white man and cringe. And, oh, I don't care one way or the other. I don't trip on black dudes when they date outside of their race. Some people are heavily invested in that. I mean, they just, they lose it when they see the interracial couples. They just go crazy. It's like white people go crazy when they see their kind dating blacks or whoever. They just lose it. Like, I don't give a damn one way or the other. I don't have to sleep with them. I don't have to listen to their complaints. I don't have to provide for them. I don't have to be responsible for their happiness or partially responsible. None of that. So... I'm not getting into it like that. Only time I trip on, on that type of stuff is when people give stupid ass reasons for dating outside of their race. Like, oh, nobody inside of my race was good enough for me. They're all bad. Like, no, nah, if you got that type of mentality, it's not the people that's within your race. It's you. You can't find a good woman in an entire race of people. It's your ass. So let's get that out of the way. When I first heard about this royal wedding and the relationship between Meghan and Prince Harry, I really didn't have an opinion one way or the other. But I looked at the union part of it and what was propping the union up and this power structure. And I'm like, she's gonna marry into the royal family that's responsible for all of this abuse against black people around the world. All of this oppression, that still continues. I gotta keep reminding y'all because somehow people think it's in the past. It's still happening today, right? So she's gonna marry into that family. So is Prince Harry going to use his white privilege to break down some of those barriers of white supremacy? Is he going to try to make some of those wrongs right? If he's not, then to me, that's like wasting white privilege. I mean, if he's marrying this black woman, you know, and he's, you know, he's the one of the good ones, right? You would think that he's going to try to do something to improve race relations, not just between him and his wife, but he got all of this power, right? He should be able to use some of it. But as I looked into Prince Harry's background, I came up with some interesting facts. Besides the fact that he was a wild child, now a lot of us were wild, I mean, I know I was wild in my 20s, but Prince Harry has a hairy side, very interesting side of him that a lot of people are just unaware of. So let me remind you, check out Prince Harry when he went to a frat party as a Nazi. Now check out Prince Harry at the frat party with his friends dressed up as a Klansman and in blackface. Ain't no way around this. Everybody knows that these are two of the most disrespectful symbols aimed at black people, the Klans uniform and the black face. Everybody knows that that is very offensive to black people. But black people got a sharp memory. It's like they never even, either they forgave or they just didn't know about it or whatever, but they just have a very, very short memory and a very, very forgiving. So I was just thinking to myself, like, you know, 
there was a time when these so-called masters actually married and had children with their black slaves. And there are some, some white guys who get off to that type of relationship. They have a master type slave relationship with their woman. I don't know what goes on behind closed doors, but I'm just saying I know of cases like this. I am not making this up. I've heard of these type of cases. I made this video so that you could be reminded of what and who you're cheering for. The British royal family presided over the exploitation of untold millions of people in Africa, India, and around the world. The British national wealth and the riches of the British family was built off the backs of black slaves, making the Industrial Revolution possible and leading to the suffering of black people all around the world to this day. But y'all happy. No more talk. What, what the haters talking about? Yeah.